We have reached, however, interim Ontario NDP leader Peter Tabins and interim Ontario Liberal leader John Fraser. Both are in Toronto. Mr. Tabins, Mr. Fraser, good to have you with us tonight. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, we, we listened today to the back and forth uh, in the legislature around this, and Mr. Calandra's uh, point uh, seemed to be summed up as saying this isn't a political matter, it's a policing matter. Mr. Tabins, your response to that? Well, it's clearly a political matter. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And frankly, there's an inquiry going on as to whether or not the application of the Emergency Act was appropriate. It's entirely proper for the Premier and the Solicitor General to appear before the committee and answer questions. Their point, Mr. Fraser, uh, up until this point, I should say, seems to be uh, maybe those questions can be asked, but the people best suited to answer them are the bureaucratic delegates we've sent to the inquiry and then the representatives from policing forces like the OPP, like the Ottawa police. Do they have a point there, Mr. Fraser? No, look, there were decisions, political decisions that were made not to take action in Ottawa. There were political decisions made to say that they'd sent 1,500 OPP officers when it was really only 50 or 60. So there's some basic questions that need to be answered. The bottom line is, for two weeks, the residents of downtown Ottawa weren't safe in the streets. Businesses were shut down. You know, women didn't feel safe walking in their neighborhoods. Our city was being occupied. And Doug Ford chose to do nothing, to do nothing for two weeks ostensibly because somebody told him it was in his, in his interest not to. You know, simply helping the city of Ottawa by coming to the table, we heard testimony that he was invited to come to the table with the federal government and with the mayor of Ottawa, and that he refused, that he thought it was a waste of time. I think he has some explaining to do to the residents of Ontario, especially Ottawa and Lincoln. Yeah, look, it's it's hard to, to disagree with the assessment. There are some outstanding questions, especially Mr. Tabbins, based on, on what we've heard so far. And, and certainly, like, why did you see that intelligence and what would you have done with it or what should you have done with it is maybe chief among those questions at this point, but there's a whole long list of them. At the same time, Mr. Tabbins, uh, the Premier has been unequivocal about his support for the federal government invoking the Emergencies Act. He, he said he stood shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister was even asked today about why, you know, should the premier appear? And, and he kind of hedged his words. He said at the end of the day, he did support the invocation of it. Uh, he didn't seem to be saying, no, he needs to appear. We need to hear from the premier. We need to hear from where he fell short. Uh, it, it, d does that take some of the wind out of the sails of the point that, that you and your colleague, Mr. Fraser, are trying to make here? No, I don't think it does at all. Let's, let's face it, as John has said, people in Ottawa had their lives turned upside down. People lost work. Businesses were put into a, an then possible position. Uh, people couldn't sleep at night. Uh, all three levels of government had responsibility to act. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the Premier, if he's not hiding anything, should be coming forward and answering questions. And frankly, if he is hiding things, he should be coming forward and answering questions. People deserve these answers, and they deserve them now. The Premier, um, Mr. Fraser, and his deputy, are uh, the deputy Premier, rather, are, are saying that because of parliamentary privilege, uh, they're seeking basically an um, an exemption from from this summons, a judicial review of it, and, and then an, ultimately a stay of the summons, uh, based on the idea of parliamentary privilege. What what is your understanding of how that might work, and do you think ultimately, given the sort of sanctity of parliamentary privilege, that the argument might work? Well, you know, uh, I, I don't know. It'll be tested in court as to whether it can work or not. But the reality is the premier has to be, come out and answer to the citizens of Ottawa and Windsor why he didn't act for two weeks. I think the prime minister probably meant to say at the end of two weeks, the premier finally came around. And that's what the point is. The point is, resident, he didn't come to the table. The province wasn't there to be able to assist and support. And they refused doing that. And that caused a lot of pain and suffering for people especially in the downtown of Ottawa. It's simply wrong. I think, to be honest, the Premier doesn't want to answer the tough questions because if I was him, I would be ashamed at not taking action. I would feel shame. For, for it is, it's clear that the inaction was the wrong thing to do and people suffered, and he should own up to that. Just to play devil's advocate here uh, and follow up with you, Mr. Fraser, and then I'll give the last word to Mr. Tabins. Um, he, the province did declare uh, an emergency, uh, a state of emergency. And I listened to Interim Chief uh, Steve Bell from the OPP yesterday, who said that did, in fact, provide them with new tools that they felt were effective, ultimately not enough tools 
to get the job done and to clear everything that was provided, he said, by the, the Emergencies Act, the invocation of that. But ultimately, that, that, that it did make a difference, that declaration of, of uh, an emergency. So it's, it's not like they did nothing. I certainly see that there are gaps, but they did ultimately do yeah. something. Yeah. Well, look, yeah, they declared the emergency literally just about two weeks in. And the point is, for those two weeks, people suffered. It was clear. We all know that. There's no question about that. Yeah. Yes, they finally acted. The problem was, you know, in the interim, I don't, you know, deny anybody the right to a vacation, but the premier was at his cottage. I mean, there's times that you go away, but when you've got the second largest city in Ontario in a crisis, in a public safety crisis, nothing else matters. Uh, Mr. Tabins, I'll, I'll give you the last word there. And, and just on the same idea, there, there was a declaration of emergency. It did make a difference, according to some of the people who have testified uh, here. And uh, ultimately, there will be representatives from the government who testify. They won't be, it won't be the premier, it won't be the deputy premier, at least not at this juncture, but there will be people testifying. There will be people that the commission's lawyers can ask questions of. Well, frankly, those who have ultimate decision-making power, the premier and his minister, should not be using the cover of parliamentary privilege to evade actually answering questions in this very important inquiry. He cannot step away from that, as John has said. People in Ottawa were put through a ringer. This premier turned his back on them for weeks. He needs to come. He needs to answer questions. People deserve those answers. Okay, on that note, uh, I'll end it there. Thank you very much. Both of you appreciate you making the time. Peter Tabins is the interim Ontario NDP leader. John Fraser is the interim Ontario Liberal leader. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.